Hello, dear students. Uh, how are you? And I hope that you're all good. And welcome again uh, to the video law and ethics that is uh, called uh, OJO 123 or OMC 123. And my name is uh, Rebe Chonya from the Open University of Tanzania, and I'm taking you through media law and ethics. And today we're going to look at three levels of ethics and the balancing conflict of interests. And this is knowledge area three, as you're able to see. Now, at the end of this lecture, we expect students uh, to define three levels of ethics and describe the examples on how they fit in our day-to-day -day media context. But at the same time, we expect students also to understand the ethical conflicts of interest and how they can overcome such ethical dilemmas uh, so as to maintain uh, the profession in the media industry and the media credibility in general. So, to start with, I uh, think it's important that we look at the meta ethics and how meta ethics, you know, function in the media fraternity. So, meta ethics we have to define is first is primarily concerned with the meaning of ethical judgments. So, we are talking about the meaning of eth ethical judgments and the underlying. Uh, values. So in other words, uh, we are talking about the fundamental values that are entailed in the meta-ethics. So meta-ethics is quite different when we talk about, you know, uh, normative ethics, applied ethics, as we shall come and as we shall see later in this subject. So in this particular aspect, we are trying to look at meta-ethics and how is it being applied in media context. Now, according to Day 1991, says meta ethics is not concerned with moral judgment, but instead attempts to distinguish uh, the ethical values. So, in other words, we are saying meta ethics is just mentioning of the moral judgments. You have to understand what constitutes, you know, moral values because we're talking of morality. So, in other words, meta ethics is a branch of analytic philosophy that explores the status, foundations, and scope of moral values, properties, and works. So when we talk of meta-ethics, this is a foundation under which we study the underlying ethical values. So in other words, it's a branch of, uh, you know, it's a branch of ethics in which we see the foundations or rather the scope of moral values. What are the scope of moral values? Properties and words. So in other words, ethics is a study of moral thoughts or moral language. So we find that as we go along, we are trying to look at the aspect of morality here. That is the study of moral thoughts and moral language. So we're talking, we are trying to talk about morality. So rather than addressing questions about what practices are right or good, or what, which practices are appropriate or inappropriate, we're not looking at that. That's not our obligation, because the question of what is good or bad, what is appropriate or what is not appropriate, that is something to do with normative ethics, of which we shall see as we go on in this lecture. But as with this case, we talk about meta-ethics, which means we are trying to look at morals. So meta-ethics asks what morality actually is. We're trying to define, it's just kind of defining, you know, these ethical principles. So in the meta-ethics, we're just defining the foundations of these words, foundation of these morals. We want to see what morality actually constitutes. So meta-ethics now is interested in whether there can be knowledge of moral truth. So you can see we're talking about morals or morality. We are saying we are just interested whether there can be knowledge of moral truth or moral feelings and attitudes, and ask how we understand moral discourse or discussions, in other words, as compared with other, with other forms of speech and writing. So, when we talk of meta-ethics, we are saying that we are trying to explore the knowledge of moral truth. What is moral truth? What are the moral feelings and attitudes? So, this makes the foundation you know, of these moral, moral issues, the foundation of moral thoughts, foundation of moral feelings, before we go further into 
looking at normative and applied ethics. So this is just a foundation. So in other words, it's the function of meta ethics now is to define these vague concepts, the concepts that are not well known, you see, in ethical terms. So we are saying provided something like precision, the accuracy of these terms, the accuracy of this meaning, so that members of the society you know, know where exactly to fit in. So it's a kind of uh, attempting to lay a level playing field before we embark on this journalism profession. So in other words, we are just looking at the foundations, you know, the main stones on how ethics should apply. So in a nutshell, we're saying that metaethics are fundamental cultural values. These are fundamental. Talking of human rights, for example, talking about what is justice. You just ought to know what is justice. You don't make an application of it, you just have to know. What does it mean to be good? What does it mean to be, uh, you know, uh, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate? So it's just a list of these ethical terms that you have to know. So it's just a fundamentals, how ethics start. So we, we, we in a nutshell, find that these are fundamental, you know, values that we have, cultural values that we have to follow. You as a journalist, for example, in this media context, you have to know what are the fundamental values before I embark on this journalism profession. So therefore, better ethics provide the broadest foundation for the sorts of ethical decisions that we make in our daily lives. So in other words, when you are a journalist, you have to ask yourself some of the best questions that before I embark on this profession, what are the ethical values that I should have in the Finger in, the, in my fingertips. What are the fundamental ethical values that I should possess before I embark on this journalism in a career? So that is what uh, meta ethics is. It's just a foundation, laying a foundation so that we know a uh, step further when we go into other forms of normative and applied ethics. Now, let us look at normative ethics. Normative ethics or normative ethical theory deals with the standards. So this is where we set standards, this is where we set criteria on how to practice this journalism field when it comes to ethical terms or ethical context. So normative ethics, just as you refer to norms, what are the norms? Norms are standards. So we have to comply, we as journalists, we as media practitioners, we have to comply to the media standards. These are the norms or the media standards, you know, uh, rules, or set of rules or principles. So there are more or less rules or principles of ethical moral behavior. So the various media industry codes of ethics or standards of good practice are examples of this, you know, normative ethics. So we are talking, of, for example, if you refer to media, Council of Tanzania, and uh, the, the codes which are rather stipulated in, in, in their documents. So you find that they have the codes of which we media practitioners have to comply and abide to those code of ethics. So the code of ethics that have been, been given by the Media Council of Tanzania and other, you know, and other organizations of a similar nature, you find that media practitioners have to read those, those codes of ethics and they have to comply and abide to those code of ethics. So that is where now normative ethics chips in. So in other words now, uh, to go further and say normative ethics now as part of moral philosophy, or ethics concerned with the criteria. There must be criteria of which we journalists have to follow so before we practice this profession when it comes to ethics. So you have to ask yourself what is moral, what is morally justifiable action and what is wrong, what is appropriate and what which is not appropriate, which is what is good and what is a bad conduct when it comes to behavior. So this is what's being referred to as normative ethics, which means now we have to set the criteria or it's the framework within which there are rules and principles and criteria that we as well as have to abide to. Now, we say it comes to the formulation of moral rules, as I said, that have the direct implications, you know, uh, for what human actions, uh, in fact, institutions and ways of life should look like. So we are saying that when we have these rules, when we have these, you know, rules and, and, and we have the rules and obligations that we have to follow, which means now they have direct implications in what we as journalists do in our day-to-day -day lives. 
they have right they, they have implication to the institution for example now we are talking of the uh, media you know organs we have different media stations for example now these they have their in-house policies they have their own rules of which they have to abide to when it comes to institutional level but also human actions you as journalists you as moral agents you remember that journalists are moral agents when it comes to decision making now so you find that they serve as a real world of frameworks within which people can begin to weigh. You have to weigh, and, and you, you weigh the competing alternatives of behavior. So fairness now, for example, fairness is a meta-ethics. We all know that from the very ground level, fairness is meta-ethics. But now, when it comes to practice, what is fairness when it comes to, now, to journalism practice? What is fairness when it comes to the world of reporting. So that's where now the difference comes in. You find that when it comes to norms now, we have fairness as a fundamental value that we, we understand that this is fairness. Fine. That's fundamental value. That's meta-ethics. But now, when it comes to norms, how is fairness being codified into something that we as journalists have to abide to when it comes to rules of, uh, you know, fairness? So this is now fairness comes in when it comes to normative ethics, but there are certain norms when it comes to fairness that you as a journalist have to abide, or you as a media practitioner have to comply. So that is what is being referred to as normative ethics. These are just sets, rules, standards, which are just there, and you have to read, and you have to abide, and you have to comply. Now, let us look into the third level that is of ethics, that is applied ethics. Just as the name suggests itself, applied, which means we have to make an application of this code of ethics. So applied ethics is a philosophical discipline concerning the application of ethical theory in the real life situation. So in other words, applied ethics is a discipline that tries to put normative theories to practical context. So remember that I said we have the norms that, is, that falls under normative ethics. So the norms are the rules and the standards that how we have to abide and have to follow. But now when it comes to applied ethics, it's a discipline that tries to put normative theories into practice. According to day 1991, as you were able to see there, it refers to applied ethics as a vital link between theory and practice. Theory and practice. So we find that in this context, when it comes to normative ethics, those are rules are just there. They just stick there for you to understand and to comprehend. But when it comes to practice now, you have to apply them and make use of them in your day-to-day -day journalism practice. Now, in other words, applied ethics is a discipline that tries to put normative theories into practical context. Now, uh, let us see the balancing conflicting interests. In applied ethics, the person who is making uh, you know, the decisions is called a moral agent. So we as journalists now, we are moral agents. And for moral agents now, ethical issues bring together conflict of interest. For example, those of editors, we have readers, we have advertisers, etc., etc. Now, we want to see these moral agents, or rather the journalists, how do they balance when it comes to conflict interest? How do they balance? How do they balance the, the, the competing moral choices? You know, you're confronted with myriad of ethical dilemmas. You as a journalist, you as a moral agent, how do you balance these conflicting interests in order for you to be ethical enough? Remember that we have so many moral virtues that you have to decide in between which one to pursue so that to become ethical. Because if you're not careful, you may end up being unethical altogether. Now, the, when it comes to balancing uh, conflict of interest now, we are talking of the interest of the moral agent, for example. Let's take an example of the interest of the moral agent individual conscience. That you as a journalist, 
you have your individual conscience, and especially if you're confronted with two more competing issues, which way to go through? So you have to ask yourself as the moral agent. Now, we have the interest of financial supporters, someone who's just paying the bills in your organization. Uh, for example, you have donors, or you have a certain donor community who's just financing your media organ or media outlet. They're just giving you donations in terms of salary, etc., etc. Now, how are you going to cover them in a negative way? Are you going to cover them in a negative way? So that is something that you have to ask yourself. This, these are conflicting kind of interests whereby you find the interest of financial supporters. These are the people who, who support you. How are you going to cover them in a negative way? So that is something that you have to ask yourself. Balancing conflict of interest. How do you overcome such a delay? How do you balance, in other words? So the interest of financial institutions, for example, the media professionals, have a company loyalty, pride in the organization for which they work for. Now, imagine that in a situation that uh, a media outlet that you're working for does something which is unlawful, for example. Or oh, there is a crisis in the organization that you're working for. That's, a, that's now conflict of interest. How do you balance? Remember that you're a journalist working in such media organization and there is a crisis. Are you going to report for that crisis? Or are you going to be loyal to the company that you're working for? We also talk about the interests of the profession. You as a journalist, you have to abide by your professional career. Media practitioners work to meet the expectations of their colleagues, for example. They have to respect the profession so that to sustain their profession. But you as a media practitioner, for example, how many times do you abide by your profession? How many times do you stick to your professionalism? How many times do you jeopardize your professional integrity, for example, in, in some of the myriad situations that you come across? So that is something you have to ask yourself. How much are you trying to balance this conflicting kind of interest so that to become ethical? We have the interest of the society. Many professions, like all of us, have a social responsibility. We are working for the people. We are saving the society, which means now we have to, to be socially responsible to the people whom we are saving. But how, how many times do we, do we compromise with the social responsibility you know, kind of feel? Are we saving the society? Remember the utilitarianism by John Stuart Mill that we discussed in the knowledge area too. We say that you as a journalist, you have to ensure that Whatever you're going to cover should be of the interest to the large number of people. And this now falls under the social responsibility theory. Are we being socially responsible to the citizen that we're working for? Or, for example, imagine a situation where a journalist is now getting a hundred million as a bribe not to cover a certain story at the expense of millions of Tanzanians or at the expense of millions of people whom you're saving. Is that being socially responsible? Balancing conflicting kind of interests. So you have to ask yourself, how able are you to balance this conflicting interest? In journalism and media fraternity now, in general, those conflict interests play themselves in a variety of ways as we are about to discuss. For example, we have to examine such basic issues such as truth and honesty. Uh, we have so many problems when it comes to balancing conflict of interest, when it comes to privacy, confidentiality, personal conflicts of interest, profit and social responsibility, and protection from offensive content, etc. Et Let's now look at truth and honesty, for example. Can the media ever be completely honest? As soon as the camera is pointing at one thing, is ignoring the other. Ask yourself as a photographer, for example, as a video photographer, whatever, whatever. You're taking a picture of somebody, but you're ignoring another person for your own personal feelings or bias, for example. Are you being ethical? Why can't you be fair enough to take the pictures of all the candidates, for example, 
imagine the candidate, imagine the, the, the photographer for this, for this case, is inclined to a certain political affiliation. You as a journalist, you are not supposed to be affiliated to any political party. You have to be neutral. Now, imagine we have two candidates and you're pointing your camera at a single you know, candidate and leaving out the other. Balancing conflict of interest. Are you being honest enough as a journalist? Or you have your own definition of truth imposed into one of the candidates and then leave out the other candidate. So, truth and honest. But also, we are talking about privacy. Do public figures forfeit their right of, uh, for privacy? Who told you that? In what circumstances? For example, we're talking of presidency, uh, the presidential marital problems, newsworthy, for example. If so, who is a public figure? And how newsworthy are uh, the marital status, for example, for presidential status, etc., etc. Because even the president or you know prime ministers, whatever, those public figures, they have the right to, to privacy. How far as a journalist do you go to unveil their privacy issues? These are the issues that we have to discuss so that to remain to sustain the ethics in the media industry. Balancing conflict of interest. How do you balance? And do you report the names of women who have been raped? For example, you're talking about privacy. Names of the women who have been raped or names of juvenile offenders, for example. Do you mention the names just anyhow? What about sex offenders? Do you mention the names? Do you expose their pictures, etc., etc.? How far do you go to interview the grieved parents? For example, somebody who has just lost, has just lost a son lying in a pool of blood. As a journalist, are you going to take a camera and exposing the crying father, full of tears, before the public. That is exposing his privacy, which is not right. Our culture values privacy, fine. We have the right to maintain the privacy of our personal information. The media, however, by the nature, we know that the media is intrusive because sometimes we have to go further into looking, you know, uh, behind the seats, what is going on, fine. But privacy proves to be sensitive because it is also a meta ethic, fine. A fundamental value, but we have to ask ourselves how far or how fair enough are we as journalists when it comes to privacy. Yet the applied ethics of various media interests, industries allow, in fact, sometimes demand that the privacy be denied. I understand that some of the media outlets would say, okay, fine, you as a journalist, please, that's a public figure. Go even beyond and try to expose his private affairs, etc., etc. But there are norms, the rules and standards out of which you have to expose somebody's privacy. We, do, we don't just expose the private of somebody anyhow. We must ensure that we stick to the ethical standards. What about confidentiality? It's an important tool also uh, in contemporary news gathering and reporting. So it's the bit of the media professionals actually to keep secret the names of those who provide them with the information. And we're saying without confidentiality, how do we get information? Employees could not report the misdeeds of their employers, of their, uh, of their, of their, of their employers for, 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 being, for fear of being fired, for example. People don't tell what they know of a crime for fear of uh, retribution from the offenders, etc. Et et so we, we as journalists, we know that confidentiality is very important. We have to keep secret of the, uh, those who give us the information. We have to protect the sources, especially when the news is, is rather complex or confidential, etc. That is one of the norm of the journalists. But how far should the reporters now go in protecting the sources' confidentiality? Because sometimes, sometimes the court of law would require a journalist to unveil the name of the source. But we as journalists, we understand that it's against our profession to unveil the name of our sources, especially if the news you know, that we cover is rather complex. 
or rather sensitive. So the ethics of confidentiality are regularly tested by reporters' frequent use of courts, attributions, the use of anonymous sources, etc., etc. Sometimes we make use of anonymous sources. And yet we have the story well covered for the interest of the public. Or inside sources, for example. But that should not always be the case. Unless if the news itself is very sensitive and you are very sure that this is for the public interest, as we the utilitarian theory that serves the greatest number of people. We also have personal conflict of interest, for example. Ethical decision makes, making requires a balance of interests, right? But an journalist's independence should make the personalities accept free, you know, fees or rather free troubles, things like gifts from group and corporations within whom we are working for, or we have to examine. So that is another key question that we as journalists we have to ask ourselves. Why should I accept an offer, for example, a transport offer to go and cover a certain news? And this is the organization that gives me transport, and it's the very kind of an organization that I'm going to work for. I'm going to examine Company B, and the very company B that gives me free transport, free lunch, free meals, etc., etc. Don't you think that you're going to compromise with the journalist, for journalism profession? These are the issues that you have to ask yourself as a moral agent because you are the one making an ethical decision. Are you going to accept the free beats? Are you going to accept the bribe? Are you going to accept free lunch? Brown envelopes. So, is it proper for many personalities to fail to discuss the sources and amounts of such use? So, you find that this Pundit Payola, brown envelopes, that's ethical bankrupt. Not only to violation of Johnny Nice independence, because you can't be independent. And it calls the entire news enterprise into question. Dear students, now let's look into profit and social responsibility. How do we balance as a media practitioner? The media industries are just like industries, just like any other industry. So they exist not only to entertain, uh, to inform, but also to make profit. All these media outlets that we know, they are, you know, they are not rather sales oriented, but they are profit oriented. Now, what happens when serving profits? Conflict with serving the public. Imagine that you are in a media media organization, and you are CEO, or maybe you are you are you are senior reporter for that matter, and you have to ask yourself whether to balance, you know, profit and social responsibility. Remember, you are obliged to save the community, and that's being social responsible. But at the same time, but at the same time, your company organization needs to make a profit. For example, practitioners in entertainment, advertising, public relations often face this dilemma. For example, does an advertising agency accept a milk-producing factory advert, even though doctors have considered the milk unhealthy? You have an advertising agency, and you know for sure that the products that you're going to market are rather, you know, counterfeit or rather expired. Now, as a journalist, for example, as a public relations officer, so to speak, what are you going to do? How are you going to balance? Because you want to earn a profit in your organization. But at the same time, you have to save the public. And remember, you have to stick to your professionalism. In this case, are you able to ignore the profit and stick to the professionalism? This is a kind of conflict of interest that you as a moral agent, as a journalist, have to ask yourself. 
So the conclusion now is saying, media practitioners now should be keen enough to be as ethical as possible and always find the best means possible to balance these ethical dilemmas in day-to-day -day endeavors if we really want to keep this profession alive. Dear students, I hope that after having discussed all those tips you are able now to understand how to confront these ethical dilemmas, balance, and how to balance this conflict of interest and the three levels of ethics, etc. Now, I want you to engage into the class activity that how can you differentiate normative ethics from applied ethics in a contemporary news reporting in your surrounding community. So I want you to engage into uh, groups and try to discuss how can you differentiate normative ethics from applied in our day-to-day -day, in the contemporary news reporting. And then after all we can discuss and come up with answers and deliberate on further actions. After saying so, ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers, dear students, thank you for your attention and we shall see uh, we, shall, we shall meet in the lecture four to discuss other issues concerning ethics. Thank you very much.